So welcome to the automatic or the autonomic. Hi. Yes. Can I ask one question? It's, yes, Paul. It's, it's, mm. it's spinning in my head. Can people go directly to uh, universal experience when they are new to the, to the energy? Because Good question. Mm. Uh, I think this is going to be a question and not an answer. It's up to us. Uh, because a lot. Okay. Um, we need to be very, very exact sometimes, um, depending on where you're coming from. So in the West, there's a lot of trash. Emotionally, there's a lot of toxicity that needs to be thrown out. So uh, Osho knew this well. He, he was leading Europeans into meditations, and they, they couldn't go into their breath. They couldn't sit still because there was so much garbage. So he created this thing called dynamic meditation. He got people to scream, to run around like mad people, and then they could go in. So I'm not from the West. I have been exposed to tens of thousands of bodies from the West, and I know that there's stuff to be thrown out. And a lot of that is personal. Yeah. And you, you, you are facilitating that right now. It's very much needed. That's why a lot of psychologists, psychiatrists, are attracted to the work that we do, because more is happening without the, psych the pharmaceutical or even the psychiatric. There's something about the body that needs to just be seen as what it is. So uh, it's a question mark. I don't know. I'm having to listen to a lot of communities that are defending that, no, the personal is important. I understand. I believe that. But then we're stretching out the range so that uh, we don't recreate. The person, yes. Right? Where they yeah. Are yeah. You have to be really open. And mm. sometimes they just yeah, they yeah, do yeah. that. They don't go into the emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you, I would ask, like, what means someone is new? Like, mm. if I come to a session. That's his question. It, mm. does it, no, but I mean, the question was if you're new, can you go to the cosmic or mm. the. But, but if I come to a session, uh, what am I new to? Yeah. Maybe, yes, this type of space and, and mm. process, but. Mm. I have a lot of people who come to the sessions, they're new, but they're like, oh, I, now I remember. Mm. Oh, this is what mm. I did when I was young. Oh, this mm. is what I experienced when I was by the lake. And, and Finnish old people who don't do any spiritual stuff come and they're like, oh, okay, okay. And they're really, like, mm. so then I don't know who is new anymore. Like, there's mm. no level that this mm. is a beginner, this mm. person could handle more of this mm. stuff. Mm. Maybe new yeah. to, to handle this in a group mm. space or by facilitation, yeah. but... Yeah. Yeah. What is the word? Yeah, yeah. When um, this lady came to this country who did a training from outside, like in Stockholm, and came back with this energy, the, the spiel was, this is the first time this is happening. This is new. This is so big. This is unique. Despite the fact that this has been going on for years, but beyond that, her point is even beyond or without inner dance. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. <laughs> so she didn't even need to try it because she mm. had been in this space where she was a baby and da, da, da. and then when my dad came to our session and then he is 76, 76, he's non-spiritual, nothing. And he's like, yeah, I think this is something what your mom was doing in the 76 with people with ambulance to the psychiatric. <laughs> 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 oh, maybe. Nice. Yeah. So it's like, Back oh, then, okay, yeah. it's not, there's something like, you mm. can, oh, there's a space where mm. can, that might be very mm. new. Mm. But and the, yeah. new, new for me, yeah. Because in my feeling, everybody knows. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. About it's nice. yeah. But new is if they hadn't, didn't have the personal experience and didn't get rid of mm. the stuff mm. out their backpack. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. They part, they skip that <coughs> and go right into. Mm. 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 I think it's all about the condition. Yeah. I might suggest that new would be. Well, like more about how what language people use. So if you're used to processing things through pop music, mm. like yeah, you might respond really well to playlist which has got pop music in it because 
mm. brings up that weight. Mm. But if that's not what you're used to, then yeah. Mm. Cause it's, it's always about connecting, trying to bridge the gap between mm. what we're doing. Mm. Mm. We're going to find out. Um, you could be holding the poppiest music or the, the Pink Floyd stuff, the Led Zeppelin. Um, you could be so cosmic and someone's going to have a personal experience. You can have the pop and someone's going to go cosmic. So um, what I'm saying is it's actually early right now because a lot of the styles have been localized and diversity hasn't really been there yet. So uh, now that we're talking about this, I think new genres of space holding is, is bound to come up and it's still in the next years that's in the offing. But this is really interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's where it's going to go. I think there would be a combination somehow. The music industry was definitely controlled. So just the fact that um, songs were bound by the three minute mark for the longest time, now an hour long song is now called a journey. That's new. Record companies wouldn't allow any of those because it's you know, you couldn't sell that kind of thing. Okay. One point just about what Maria also said, like it's, mm. um, for me it's been a good tool to practice myself, not to box this in like that it should be a first person or then cosmic, then mm. something. Because then if, if I'm, I keep like open doors, it also mm. allows the space to, to be kind of free. Mm. <laughs> Mm. psychotherapy that goes step by step so then mm. if, if I'm open that anyone can experience anything mm. then that also is allowed in the mm. space somehow mm. Mm. But this is also the challenge of working with a group always that, that everyone is individual and how do you find something that yeah. Yeah. but the space holder will always affect everyone yeah. when they come in they will trust you mm -hmm. and you're, use, you're, use, you're allowing that only so that they can trust themselves mm -hmm. but anything you say in the beginning, we'll take them there. So it takes so much care in what kind of space am I actually holding? Person, planet, or both? And then that, the rest will follow. The way you're pushing bodies will be according to your intentions. Are you leaving it in peace? Are you, uh, we used to call it the poinking festival. <laughs> poink, poink, poinking all over the place. Uh, that was beautiful because we learned so much about the body. But right now, there are people who are just leaving beings alone. Anyway, that... One more thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of a point of view. So if you hmm. have, a have a chance to, to look from the point of view of, of body and person, hmm. or sorry... Point of view. Point of view. <laughs> or then another point of view, hmm. the cosmic, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of choice, as, hmm. as well as what you said, going and taking things out of hmm. your back. Are we taking things out or we're just changing the point of view mm. to the things that we yeah. have in the backpack? So it's yeah. yeah. hard to go in the cosmos mm. with mm. the backpack. You know? <laughs> and then, you know, there is no order. Like, what, what, mm. what to hold in, mm. what to take out, you know? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, when you first look at this, yes, uh, what is interesting? Um, no need to copy because it's yours, um, but then we, we would, um, it's just that when you do look at this photo, then it becomes more interesting. Um, there is the spine, and then there's the brain, and there are these shapes. So let's go back to the picture. What do you see in the system? Uh, maybe fear or no. tonic or chronic are different phases in epilepsy. So when you go into a seizure, it's very Kundalini. First, it it locks. The the surge is so strong that you you lock, and then the the chronic would be, and then the post ictal would be. It's so Kundalini. It's like you know. So when you know the stages. Um, of the first surge, the second surge, <coughs> epilepsy has so much to teach us. What do you see? There are these two systems, and then what? Mm -hmm. they, they extend from different parts of the spine. 
Do you find that interesting then? Why? Do you record? Yes, it's recording. So why then do people... <laughs> why, this, this should start making sense to you. Why, why then do people reach towards certain parts of the body? It's because already the spine is mapping things out. So notice that the, the sympathetic is fear, excitement. That's in the right. Where does it extend? From the middle. That's called the thoracolumbar region. Where does the I'm safe, I'm open, I'm good. That's the parasympathetic. I trust you. They extend from the top and the bottom. You, you see? So the craniosacral regions are the regions for trust. And fear and excitement actually extends from here. So when you have people pointing you here, pointing you here, that's what they're accessing. It's either the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system. And then when you have a space holder who holds all of them, they hold you here, they hold you here, they hold you here. They're co-activating light, dark, hot, and cold. That is the system. Super basic. And beautiful. So then maybe let's be more specific here. Mm. Maybe with the... Hmm. Maybe with the nerves. Okay. Wait. Let's uh, choose another one. The one with the muscles. I find these so helpful. So, um, you can try it out in yourself or not. Like, uh, the sympathetic begins here in T1, and it ends all the way here in T, uh, L3. So the thoracic and then the lumbar, when you're starting to hold from below the, this uh, shoulder bone all the way to this part of the pel pelvis, that's fear. <laughs> fear has a place. And, you know, the adrenaline system, fight or flight or freeze, has an actual region. And then when you want to look at trust and openness and safety, then a lot of those would be here. Um, it's not the exact, um, we're looking at more the cranial nerves. Uh, there's actually only four up here. It's cranial, cranial nerves, um, three, uh, seven, nine, and 10. So 10, for those who know it, is the vagus nerve. And that is responsible for most parasympathetic um, extensions. I think we can find the cranial nerves more, um, more here. So it's that soft spot at the back of the neck. <laughs> what uh, the Buddhists and the Hindus call the seed of consciousness. Um, it's all there. It's extending from there. So just knowing that already helps you a lot. Um, you can be literal and you can go to the actual regions. I know it's kind of hard to reach people's back when they're laying down. Um, but the, the regions do exist. Right next to the spine, you have the ganglia cells. It's a group of cell bodies that then would extend. So a lot of them are... Um, coordinating from those condensed areas. Um, but don't be literal because they all extend. So the, 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 the members, like the, um, the limbs, um, the signals are quite easy. When you, when you watch the room and you, you see someone doing that, <laughs> they're protecting something. They're holding something. And then when you see this happening, you know they're protecting something. So you don't have to literally hold the spine or the cranium. Simply doing that already sends a message to there. You're already sending a message to, okay, open. And maybe when you come back to there again, and then you open it again. And maybe you lift it up. That's an, a further opening. 
and then maybe it's there. And then you leave them alone next time you come back, it's actually moving already because you knew how to send the signals back and forth. Or if it's not moving, they're journeying because you're communicating to um, yeah, you're communicating to the system. So um, you can apply what we spoke about in terms of generalized spread as complete the system. Don't just work in one. Um, so a lot of people are overly focused on like this system, the solar plexus, because a lot of power supposedly comes from that. Um, what is there? The adrenaline gland. You know what adrenaline does? It gives you power, but usually in the situation of fear. So when you overly express on that thoracolumbar region, you're actually just repeating fear states. And people love it because they can be courageous. But when you forget to reach into the, the, cranium, the cranium and the sacral, um, that's when people get tired. <laughs> um, it, it actually benefits the facilitator a lot more than the participant when they keep poking you in that area. You, you just get like exhausted, but it gives them so much pleasure. I'm actually doing something. Um, so you said uh, the adrenal. The adrenal cortex sits right on top of the kidneys. Mm. Um, so when you, when you start a session, one of the advice would be go to the bathroom because when, you're, when your bladder and, you, and your kidneys are full, um, and then you activate the adrenal cortex on top of that, that's a little bit too much. So to bring about balance, it has something to do with ions. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's negative and positive. So um, yeah, going back to here, then this starts to make sense to you. Um, you're not here just to create a meditation where you want people to relax. So obviously it's not just about the parasympathetic. You would go for the sympathetic nerves. Um, so just create a system where you co-activate them all at the same time. Where you would go deeper into this is there are chemicals. There are neurotransmitters called dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, there's cortisol, which is a stress hormone, there's serotonin. Even if you don't totally understand a lot of those, and we will talk about it within the next days, balancing out the sympathetic, which is called the SNS, and the parasympathetic, which is the PSNS, will assure that people are, are having, they're active, they're alive, but they're relaxed, they're still. Um, so a lot, of thi a lot of the practice begins with the autonomic, the part of your nervous system that has control over you. Um, and that's called the ANS. Um, why? Why are we looking at this? What is the ANS? What is in control of you? What is in control of people? A lot of the time, they're controlled by their reactions. Do I like the situation? Should I be afraid? Um, there, there's always judgment coming from there. So a lot of that is coming from trauma. A lot of that is coming from old experiences of terror, of pain, of pleasure. So a lot of the programming begins with the autonomic nervous system. One of the big reasons why we are conducting this work is we're, we're asking people to, to respond differently. Um, one of the definitions I had of inner dance a long time ago is inner dance is the ability to be afraid without being scared. You, you, you allow people to, to confront uh, death or whatever. It's like, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just looking at it, but my body is responding so that a conversation could possibly happen. Um, that's why... Um, an autonomic practice is coming to the world on top of the somatic practices like yoga. Like, um, it goes back to that whole conversation about light language yesterday. Do I control it or is something bigger in control of this room and of this universe? Okay. Um, 
Mm. So having got over that, let's go into a general introduction into the lobes without opening these yet today. Um, you have these lobes and they all do different things. So then when you're not just Uh, when you're not just touching the body, but you're touching this, why do some people hold here? Is it, okay, that's a crown chakra, but what does that actually mean? When, you, when, you, when you're holding this, do, do some of you hold heads, or did someone hold your head? Why are they doing it? So the question would be, where is emotion? Where is memory? Okay, I want them to remember. Where do I go? I want them to see. I want them to... Cool. So yesterday, what we defined is, this is the front of the brain, this is the frontal lobe. If I want their bodies to move, then it's going to be here. We can subdivide that later on. So a lot of you are familiar with the eyes start moving automatically, called REM. So at the very front of the brain are called the frontal eyelids. So a lot of the time when you're going to REM state, there's just this activation of um, the part of the frontal lobe. Um, so that is responsible for control, decision making. Um, okay, so now let's go to the top. This is called the parietal lobe. And so when people are having somatosensory feelings, um, levitation is part of that. Um, ants crawling, the sensation of pain, warmth, or cold, it's there, okay? And then when you start to see colors and pictures and visions and stories, that's the back of the head. That's the back. The pictures are happening at the back of the head. That's called the occipital lobe. And then when it's memories, emotions, um, a person doesn't need to come to you with um, essential oils in their hands. Some people smell energy. <laughs> you can smell from memory because the olfactory system, the sense of smell is right next to um, into the mem it's right next to memory and it's also right next to the auditory cortex. So the sense of sound and the sense of smell are so linked together and that's in the temporal lobe. So there's a reason why people use smell because it also activates the emotional space and the memory space and the sound space, which is nonlinear space. Um, both, that's called contralateral. So that um, from the right ear to the left auditory cortex, it's, it's all the same. The occipital lobe has two auditory fields. The frontal lobe has two motor fields, it's left and right. So you can activate it through. Um, most of the time, contralateral also means multi both functions exist, but sometimes one is specialized in one side and the other is specialized in one side. So, for example, language for most people exists only on one side. It's on the left. So, yeah, good question, good point. You see that? They're two brains. <laughs> they're not actually really connected. They're, they're really conjoined by the, um, the, uh, these tracts. These are the tracts. These are the, where the signals or messages are passing through. So when you're having an energetic or spiritual experience, this is where real transmission is happening. The nerve tracts. So going back to the lobes. Um, the, now you're seeing what it means to, to map out the experience, to have a generalized spread. You want to talk to all these lobes. It will get a little bit complicated when we start to look at the different gyruses and I don't know how interested you will be with that. The main point we might 
try to look at is, okay, we're, we're actually establishing different senses. Now I know possibly where emotions are located, where, where is somato, somatosensory sense is located, where is the vision, where is the sound located, and how do I make it one? Somehow they all act in concert. They don't act separately. So there are places in the brain called the association areas where you need to translate all of the stimuli into just one before sending that out again. So when people feel energy, that's actually already the convergence. It's all of the senses coming together in, in what's called synesthesia or multi-sensory integration. You are now a poet, a musician, a dancer, a sculptor, a, you know, all of these senses become just one ginormous sense, a sixth, seventh, tenth sense, however you want to call it. Questions around that? Yeah, so uh, what you're saying is you could, you could use tactile yeah. touch mm. to, through yeah. the skull to yeah. stimulate into the brain. Mm. Mm. Does that mean? Mm. You could use touch, you could, certain sounds could also stimulate, like certain rhythms mm. can stimulate, like, um, because what's interesting is when you look at these, um, different brain waves reside or oscillate in these different regions. So um, ga gamma, the highest frequency, generally spreads out. Um, alpha, a lot of that happens back here. Um, alpha happens back there. Alpha is like daydreaming. Lower than that would be theta, like sleepy, sleepy music. A lot of that happens there. So if someone is stuck in just experiencing movement, you could use... Um, a, a lot of the time when, you're, when people are experiencing music, it's usually um, beta, like uh, the normal um, rock and roll or techno music type BPM. Something that they can follow where the heartbeat um, has a, a rhythmic pulse. So a lot of the energy actually goes into the motor, the motor function. Um, but the, the waves that are hard to, 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 to latch onto, a lot of that um, would be back here, for one, in vision. When visions appear, that's when the body is moving. So you need to, to bring some of the delta back there and the theta back there. Um, so that's, that's going to be where we would go. We need to heighten our dialogues so that you would be interested in, okay, oh, so there's this thing about mapping out the cortex. Oh, okay. There, um, because underneath this, if you remember, this is the new brain. The cortex is something we put over the old brain. <laughs> the oldest humans didn't actually have the cortex. We, we only had the basal ganglia system so that we couldn't really think in the same way we do in abstract ways. We were very basic, instinctive, living in the moment. We don't have yesterday or tomorrow. We don't anticipate. We're in the now. But right now, we can spread out. We can remember all the way from the Big Bang all the way to the black hole. That's what the neocortex has given us. Um, it's the gray matter on top of the white matter. Underneath that is white matter where all of the transmission is happening. Um, so that's the new brain. What do you mean when you say that, where, where all the transmission is happening? Um, un underneath the gray yeah. is the white matter. And what makes the, the, the neurons white, um, the, the synapses, yeah. wait, um, Let's look for a picture. You mean transmission between neurons? Yes. Right. I would, we, yeah, yeah. Let's look for at least a picture because it would be good to look at it. But yeah, maybe here, I don't know. Transmission, there. <laughs> maybe here, no. I didn't even input there. Um, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so this is important. When, when people are activating 
generally sending so much electricity, it doesn't actually mean that those would last. So um, the, the way you set in patterns is by wiring neurons together uh, through what's called action potentials. And every time you fire them, they, they, they will wire, but when you're making too much firing, the chances of them wiring permanently will be small because you're not containing things, you're not limiting things. It, you're just like a baby, you're too cosmic, and you're not creating patterns that would land on a daily, everyday setting. So um, when, when things are firing that way, you create the gray matter, yes, because um, you're not protecting the connections. If you want to, to strengthen the connections, you need to create this white matter, and that's called myelin. And when there's myelin, the, the, the transmission can happen much faster, 100 to 1,000 times faster, and it can go much farther. So without myelin, transmission is very, very short, very, very um, temporary. Because it's spreading to, into too much directions. It's not learning. For you to learn something, you need to myelinate. The, the secret to wisdom is myelination. So underneath the gray matter, your brain's actually white. So, so what is wrong with dopamine, the dopamine high, the dopamine hit, is when you are experiencing too much dopamine, you actually inhibit the, the, the myelination process. Going too high, that's what I mean about you become more stupid when you go high because you're not creating the conditions of slowness that allow for, and, and what's responsible for that would be other neurotransmitters that uh, dopamine inhibits, um, like uh, GABA is what slows things down. But here's what's interesting. The, the hormone that allows women to secrete milk when they're breastfeeding is called prolactin. And what inhibits prolactin is dopamine. Uh, men, do we have prolactin? Yes, because prolactin is actually responsible for producing what's called oligodendrocytes, which allows for uh, myelination. So when you're not using the milk for breastfeeding, and for men, when you're not inhibiting that, that's actually what allows for genius. So that's why too much dopamine, too much of the kundalini hit actually creates stupidity because it's spreading the connections out. It's good because it will make you a baby. It will establish a network of possibilities. But then when you give them the rest time, that's when um, they would learn. They, they would strengthen the new circuits that they're learning. But that kind of makes me think that you need the integration time. But yeah. Mm. Wisdom of yoga, which is not only physical, yeah. but the yeah. physical is a preparation mm. for yeah. contemplation, meditation. That all of those, like yeah. You need all of that yeah, yeah. to get to that mm. state of being. Mm. But you can also build that into the journeys anyhow, as well. You can allow the hour and a half that you have with them to, to be integrative and not just exploding all the time. So the end part of it could be slower. Yeah. Mm. Well, what facilitators are doing, including me, often is to not even differentiate the high and the low. If I bring them high, I'm also holding a huge low altogether. Um, that's the kind of music we were describing that's being created now. But interesting. This is probably uh, creating a lot of connections inside you. It takes a long time to actually get to this point. For me, it took about 13 years, 12 years, 13 years of practicing with so much just to realize that. Um, and now we need to share it because we don't need to um, go with this current momentum a lot of people are going into. Um, it's not even just learning. Like I said, like dopamine will inhibit serotonin. Dopamine gives the high, serotonin lets you be happy. So the moment you're trying to get high, you're not actually happy. Dopamine, dopamine's hard. Dopamine is um, coming from the old brain, the basal ganglia. 
It's being sent from this uh, part called the ventrotegmental area and the substantia nigra. It makes decisions uh, on whether to stimulate or inhibit. These are words that would be really useful. Do you stimulate or do you inhibit? So there are chemicals that stimulate. Like um, glutamate is the most common excitatory, stimulatory drug. And when there's too much glutamate, you know, like monosodium glutamate, you, you need glutamate to learn and to activate, but when there's too much, it becomes poisonous in the body. So too much activation in the body actually poisons it. It needs to be balanced out by the biggest inhibitory drug in your body that's called GABA. GABA slows down. And a lot of those actions are happening in the basal ganglia, in the old brain. Um, let's look back at what it looks like. Um, subcortical functions here. Th this is um, the basal ganglia, these four. Without the hippocampus and the amygdala, they handle emotion, they handle mood, they handle hang hunger, they handle um, um, all the autonomic functions, the things you don't need to think about, how your heart beats, how your breathing shifts. You don't give orders. Your body makes those decisions. The old brain takes care of that. The new brain takes care of your thinking for you. Um, so... What we're differentiating here is a lot of people who, who go into the entry point of the process, a bigger interest is in the, the old brain, but they don't actually know what's happening in the new brain yet. Both are important. You want to bring them together because they're, they're interacting with each other. Uh, questions? Okay. Yeah, I'm mm. sorry. Yeah, yeah. It, it, there, there's a connection. There's a connection. Yeah, it's the same. Um, a lot of it works with ions, with calcium. With um, Like the synapses, the dendrites axons, they send these chemicals and ions back and forth. They're always signaling each other on, is it safe? Can I be excited now? Uh, do I relax? Um, it, everything that we see, everything that we hear are influencing these signals so it's connected to that it's it's more or less the same the glutamate gaba balance is very recent as a discovery in science um, we didn't actually know how a lot of these worked until fairly recently that um what were like what balance really means from a synaptic point of view um, what? L, L, yeah. Um, there's so many neurotransmitters. They all probably correlate with each other, but the most common would be glutamate and GABA that makes the positive and negative switching. So um, it's very simple. Like music that will slow people down and spread things out, you, 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 you activate inhibition. It's GABA. It's GABAergic. But every time you use pumping music, you're going to activate glutamate. And, and that's going to feel really metallic in the body. It's going to feel like a drug. Yeah, it's, it feels like uh, a drug. <laughs> it feels like cocaine. It feels like speed. It, 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 it pumps the heart. It's exciting. It's like an orgasm, you know? But GABA allows you to one allows you to go to the party. The other one brings you to the ashram. <laughs> Maybe like relating to the playlist, then, that do we longer the slow in the end? Not that's like the old style of playlist where mm. the, like what the kundalini activation is using the playlist being like the feeling high and then feeling slow. So now mm. we're not doing it anymore. We're holding both at the same time. So mm. could, I could look at it. The impression happens. All yeah it's amazing you don't need a microscope in order to keep studying people's bodies when this is happening 
In the inner dance trainings, we never tell people what to do. What we do is we tell people what's happening so that that will inform them on what to do. So even just knowing these things would be super helpful when you begin to design um, your tools and your techniques, right? Um, just to then bring cohesion and simplicity here and to point out that it's not actually that complicated. Uh, let's look at the more complex one, which for me is really, really interesting. <laughs> Bringing up uh, neurotransmitters, there's a certain mixture that allows you to function when you're awake. So SWS is slow wave sleep. Again, you have access to this. You don't need to copy everything down so you can concentrate. REM is when um, dream supposedly happens. So let's say when Paul talked about I passed out yesterday, that's you going into SWS, slow wave sleep, delta sleep. That's the nearest you would get to death as a consciousness or the black hole. But then when you start to go into the stories that dreams comprise of, that's when you, they call REM sleep paradoxical sleep. Because when you study the brain when you're dreaming, it's so much the same as when you're awake. <laughs> you're actually more awake in a way when you're sleeping through REM sleep. So you would study these um, formulations. What is the difference when I'm awake, when I'm in SWS and when I'm in REM? So to, to, to make this a little bit um, I think this had a pointer or something. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> Look at your TV, um, Susanna. It's got a pointer. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, melatonin, yeah. It, it needs to go up when you're awake at the end part of wake so that you can go into sleep. And then it starts to go lower. What is interesting here would be two things. Serotonin and norepinephrine. Okay, Serotonin is the happy drug. It's also the love drug. So when you want to stay connected to people, that's when you raise serotonin. Very similar to oxytocin. Now, scientists have been trying to scratch their heads to figure th this out. Why is it that um, serotonin starts to decrease in the first stages of sleep, and then in REM, it goes totally empty? Do um, you know ecstasy, the drug? That sends out serotonin and the serotonin receptors they totally receive i can see some smiles they, they know how connected you get on <laughs> on ecstasy so there, there, there's similar things happening in magic mushrooms that you don't get in an lsd experience and then compare ayahuasca to ecstasy not the same um it's a, on, on serotonin, you love everyone. It's like you're like, I love you. You're everyone's like, ah, oh, beautiful family, tribe. But why is it that you don't need it when you're, when you're going to the dream? So it seems like serotonin cannot be up when you're dreaming because it doesn't, when you're attached, it doesn't allow you to extend distance of connections that allows you to look at the nonlinear and the weird. You're still personalizing. Same as with um, the other thing that interestingly goes down is norepinephrine. It starts to decrease in N1, N2, and then it goes zero in REM sleep. Those are the neurotransmitters that gets emptied out. And noradrenaline is the adrenaline of the brain. It allows you to fight, to control things. So, when you try to use an emotional song in a journey, you're actually not really bringing people into the dream state because you're, you're, you're limiting. You're, 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 you're not extending the, the possibilities of the cosmic because people are still traveling short distances. That's why the emotional songs are good, it's beautiful, it's on the way, but it's not actually how nature is designing the dream. This is super recent science as well. 
um, these formulations. So as a scientist, as a space holder, it's based to know some of these mixtures, these chemistries of change. <laughs> it, it explains a lot, right? In terms of what kind of dream, because there are different stages of the dream. There's a... Um, there's a... You don't generalize. There are these... Um, there are these different stages of the dream. So, so look at this, um, for example. On the first few hours when you're dreaming, you, you go very, very deep into SWS or the deepest sleep, which is when you're experiencing delta. The music that has no waves, no, no information. That's when you die. That's when you go into the black hole. You, you know when you wake up sometimes and you can't move? You're paralyzed and everything's black? That's you waking up there <laughs> and non-REM. Something happened and you just woke up. That's when muscular paralysis is setting in. That's when you're going to disconnect your motor, certain motor functions with your visual functions because it's really hard to be dreaming and then your motor functions are active. You're going you're gonna to dream walk. <laughs> you're going to dream talk. Um, so, so that's why that's happening. You need to kill the part of you that's controlling. So you need to build that into your workshop. You need to drop. A lot of facilitators are so excited. Okay, I'm going to build, I'm going to build. I'm going to build, but actually REM really becomes possible initially through deep, dark night death zones. So somewhere in minute 10, minute 11, minute 12, after you build up a little bit, you drop it. You go into a delta drop, and then you slowly raise it up. So <clears throat> through a seven or eight hour sleep, um, yeah. Mm. excitement in general in the music, correct? Yeah. So mm. through either tempo, speed, yes. or yeah. harmonic density. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah. intensity, texture, like all of those. Um, so another thing to pick up from here is um, in the beginning, REM is short. And, and in the last hours of sleeping, REM is long. So here you don't need deep sleep anymore because you've already made the formulations of the high and low, here's where you're already mixing delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma. Um, so depending on your style of holding space, depending on the, the, the vibrations you're holding, the way you're touching people, a, lo a lot of facilitators are actually stuck here. If you're not going too deep into non-REM, uh, a lot of this in the sleep stage is just release. You're letting go of the baggage. You're, you're getting rid, rid of the junk. You're throwing out the tension that you absorb during the day. But if you haven't brought them into, into really deep sleep before you bring them into to the dream, a lot of the neurotransmitters are still too excitatory. So um, you need to understand how some of the wave works. If you want to bring this earlier anyway, to bring long REM, Earlier, you need to bring this in so that you don't get stuck in um, stage one, light sleep, stage two, release, okay, complexes, sleep spindles. You know when you're, when you're moving, when you're sleeping? That's when you're getting rid of the garbage. That's when you're throwing out the tension. And then when you're dead already, that's SWS, then you can go into REM. And a lot of that's connected to the list of neurotransmitters that I... Um, showed you. Interesting. Th th these are the structures that you're actually um, affecting. So, I mean, it it's looks invisible. Each time for each person. I mean, it could be in stage yes. four, yeah, yeah. not even like mm. really be asleep. Yeah. Still yeah. Be moving even in stage four. Exactly. Like some people have done so much work. And then you have these, old, let's say, old grandmothers come in and you need to th design a different wave. Ask to people who have done so much um, ayahuasca experiences already, their makeup is so different. Um, or super athletes, they wouldn't 
they wouldn't be the same as stockbrokers or, yeah. but some so stockbrokers are athletes. So you need to understand the makeup. What's your vibe? What's your frequency or vibration? E even with a general understanding, then you get to observe that, okay, I'm not just looking at a person. I'm, I'm looking at a, a set of vibrations. How do I... Yeah. Seven hours during in advance. Yeah, yeah. What were those? What were those again? I remember. Well, you that. What we've already talked about today as yeah. well. Just um, by the intention of planet versus person, mm -hmm. um, holding the range early, yeah. uh, because in the beginning the choice was to go up and down. Yeah. We realized that the most power emanating from the journey was the contrast. Mm -hmm. It was moving from fast to slow. You often maybe have noticed that, that when there's a drop, that's when the emotions come out. Like after the buildup, like boom, that's when they feel it. And then when you raise it up again. So what we learned was when, when we would um, get something from Johann Sebastian Bach, let's say air on the G string, and then you get like a strong buildup. Let's say uh, in, in the past, I would put in like an Elton John... <laughs> track or a Led Zeppelin, um, some of them have slow buildups, some of them have fast, so you would study, uh, when there's a buildup, then there's the chemistry, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking the soup, here's a pot, here's boiling water, and what do I throw into the pot, okay, here's a little bit of that vibration called a carrot, I'm, I'm going to put in some garlic and some onions, next thing you know, you have a soup. So people have been intuitively making soups, an, an energy soup or a sound soup all this time. And we've been borrowing the genius from, from Michael Jackson. From, I used to go into Michael Jackson and Queen. I would take like these classic songs and then I would, I would warble them. <laughs> I would slow them down. So instead of dut, 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 I was just, the, or like, is this the real life? Is it? And so by the time they hear "Mama, just kill," they're going into the actual memories that were embedded at the time of creation, but they'd see it fr from another thing. Then you put in the flanger, the phaser, and then they're just you're reshaping a lot of them. So I took the build up that belonged to, um, to beat it. And then I, I, I changed the tempo. So I'm, I have the person there, <laughs> but, but no, you know, th this is something they, they're experimenting with dementia and Alzheimer's to get old people to remember. They would play these songs, but they need to change the, the tempo or the harmonics in the song because they, they, they're not actually the same people anymore. So just enough remembrance, but just enough space for something new. Um, that, that's really exciting. So when you understand sampling, or even just the DJ machines, which is in your phone, um, you have people like her, they, they've been experimenting with these. Spiritual people have been experimenting with these, DJing people's bodies with these in mind. These models have been shared uh, to so many people. I just don't know why they're not being transmitted to uh, some of the trainings that receive these. That, that, you know, uh, but th this is the main model that has allowed this energy to spread throughout the world since the beginning because we had the, 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 the song of nature. The sleep stages in, is an invention made by the human species so that you can manage high and low. You can't always be high. You would crash. So there's an actual rhythm or song or model that uh, deep history um, conducted so that people can be here on Earth in relationship between the sun and the moon. That's a good question. So like this cycle, the way that... Yes. Yeah. 
mm. create a, like a linear time, yeah. mm. that's pretty much what it'd be like if you were to stretch the 12 stages across it. Yeah. Kind of hit it like where it should. Mm. Like yeah. Traditionally, that's how we were doing it. The 12 yeah. stages are stages in the awakening process where you would move from satisfaction to dissatisfaction, release, uh, disintegration, awakening, illumination, uh, um, choice, success, failure, the dark night of the soul, integration and reintegration, um, where you, you, you can experience love through disappointment and forgiveness through anger so that you 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 would have these songs in your backpack okay um some people need to to say sorry or to say goodbye um yeah we can take a break if some people have some things up uh it's just the things that might get wet i just noticed that and i just like you know it's it's part it's from there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No, because um, the inner dance has that actual drawing that we did in the online training. So we can go over that. Uh, those maybe, were maybe I've seen it. those were twelve stages based. Yeah. Um, it's not how you do it now. No. no. Because um, I think w- where human beings are now, there's no there's no differentiation between the dark night and illumination and awakening. Every all of them are now happening at the same time. Sometimes people go into the pain, but that's actually pleasurable. The dark and the light is so intermixed with so many human beings now that um, it's actually elementary to have to take them through things one at a time. But if you are working with people who are in the cities and are needing support from an emotional, psychological wave perspective, design your wave. It's up to you. Like, what would be the... When you compose a song, there's always the intro, then the verse, the chorus, the refrain, the guitar solo. Um, So design the journey wherever you want to take them. Just create a wave. Yeah, so I guess I would say add and ask. Um, Mm. Like, the way that I've been doing sessions is some people, some groups I'll have, I'll feel like they're going to respond better to whole songs. Mm. Underlay it with like noise and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, so you don't feel like the energy itself is in a place where mm. we should just not really feed them anything that they're they're comfortable with and just rip that away and just let it just be noise and be like, this is kind of how it is and <laughs> just let it work. Um, or is it all right to feel like maybe it? It should be both. Um, I think if we work with doctors. Uh, you you would need to experiment with quicker playlists as an introduction. So is it actually possible to have something 15 or 20 minutes long? Um, if you want to hold them for as long as 90 minutes, there needs to be a wave there. So let, let me give an example. Like this morning, there, there were clear delineations there compared to yesterday where it, everything was just like a whole range of noise. Um, that was the intro. But I, I, I made sure that this morning there would be a clear rising, falling. But there were many moments where it was all mixed up. You, you wouldn't know if it was low or high. Um, so it's, it's still in the mix. Um, we're very careful not to make decisions. We, we don't have preferences. What we're trying to do here is establish a vocabulary so that we, we have a range, we have possible structures. Um, so if you don't have this, you would be looking at a human body. You, can, you don't actually know, you know certain things that are happening that's chemical and that's circuitry. Um, what are you activating every time you, you know? There's a whole network of things there.